Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm gonna to try to explain to you the general properties of arteries, arterioles, and capillaries in less than 10 minutes. So lift that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off by first looking at the general structure of the cardiovascular system. Now the cardiovascular system is made up of the heart and vessels. Now the heart, as you should know, is a double pump system. There is a left heart, which receives and pumps oxygenated blood and a right heart, which receives and pumps deoxygenated blood. Now in between the left and right heart are a bunch of vessels. Now the first vessel is the aorta, and the aorta is a vessel that comes off of the left ventricle and delivers oxygenated blood into the rest of the systemic vasculature. Now branching off of the aorta are arteries, then branching off of the arteries are the arterioles, and then branching off of the arterioles are the capillaries, which form capillary beds. The capillary beds will then fuse into venules. The venules will fuse into veins. And then the veins will fuse into the inferior and superior vena cava, which then empty all of the blood into the right atrium. Now, the main thing that I want you to take away from this figure is the fact that the capillary beds are organized in parallel. In other words, the organs are organized in parallel. Now, each organ is going to be supplied by a certain number of capillary beds, and each organ is going to be organized in parallel. So all of these capillary beds are organized in parallel. Now, in this video, I'm going to mainly focus on the arteries, the arterioles, and the capillary beds. And what we're going to look at is how the aggregate cross-sectional area, how the linear flow velocity, how the aggregate resistance all vary in each of these three things. And we're also going to talk about the, which one of these vessels has the greatest drop in pressure. So with that, let's go deeper into the video. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is the aggregate cross-sectional area. Now, in order to understand that, we have a figure here. Now, this figure shows a vessel, vessel 1, branching off into two vessels, vessel 2 and vessel 3. Now, in order to understand what the aggregate cross-sectional area is, we have to know what cross-sectional area is. And cross-sectional area is just a way to describe how wide a tube opening is. So we can calculate it by using this formula here. So the cross-sectional area for a vessel is going to be roughly equal to 3.14 times the radius squared. So in other words, the greater the radius, the greater the cross-sectional area. Now, as we can see here, since the vessel 1 has the greatest radius, it's going to have the greatest individual cross-sectional area. But what about the aggregate cross-sectional area? So the aggregate cross-sectional area is basically when you take two individual cross-sectional areas and add them together. So if you were to take the cross-sectional area of 2 and add it to 3, what you would see is that the total cross-sectional area of 2 and 3 would be greater than the individual cross-sectional area of 1. Now in order to visualize this better, I have this figure here. And what we see here is just a visual representation of the aggregate cross-sectional area of 2 and 3 versus the individual cross-sectional area of 1. And what we see here is that the aggregate cross-sectional area of 2 and 3, which is shown by here, is greater than the cross-sectional area of 1. So in other words, what I want you to take away from this is that the greater the amount of branching, the greater the aggregate cross-sectional area is. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the linear velocity. So here we have the same figure that we had in the last bunch of slides. And what we see here is that we have two openings. We have opening one and opening two. And what we see here is that the cross-sectional area of opening one is less than the cross-sectional area of opening two. So how does cross-sectional area affect linear velocity? So linear velocity basically describes how fast a fluid is moving. And in order to understand the relationship between aggregate cross-sectional area and linear velocity, we have to understand the flow equation. So the flow equation basically states that the flow rate of a fluid is going to be equal to the cross-sectional area of the tube times the linear velocity. So the flow rate basically describes how much fluid is flowing at a certain 
past a certain point per unit time. And the A symbolizes the cross-sectional area, and the V is the linear velocity, which basically describes how fast a fluid is moving. So the thing that you have to understand is that if we were to look at the flow rate at point one and the flow rate at point two, assuming that there is no fluid lost or gained between the two points, the flow rate at point one and point two would be equal. So taking this assumption, we would say that F1 is equal to F2. Now, if we were to plug in A times V into each of these, what we would see is that A1 times V1 is equal to A2 times V2. So in other words, the main takeaway that you should see is that as the cross-sectional area of a vessel increases, the linear velocity of fluid flowing through that vesicle decreases. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the aggregate resistance. So in order to understand um, how resistance comes into play for vessels, we're going to look at it from the point of view from electrical circuits. So the first circuit that we're going to look at is a series circuit. And for the series circuit, we have two resistors, which are organized in series. So in other words, one after the other. Now, in order to calculate the resistance or the aggregate resistance or the total resistance of this circuit, all we have to do is sum the two resistors together. So when you do this, you get a total resistance of four. Now, what if we were to take the same circuit and organize it in parallel? Well, what we would do in this case is that what we would see is that the total resistance in this case would have to be calculated using this equation. So if you were to put the two resistances in this equation, what you would get is that the equivalent resistance or total resistance would be equal to one. So the main takeaway that I want you to get from this is that circuits in parallel have a lower aggregate resistance than circuits in series. Therefore, the more branching you have, the lower the aggregate resistance. So how does all of this come into play when we look at it from the point of view of vessels? So the first thing that I want to look at is the aggregate cross-sectional area. And what you see going from the aorta all the way down to the capillary beds is that the cross-sectional area, the aggregate cross-sectional area, increases. So as we go from the aorta all the way to the capillary beds, the aggregate cross-sectional area will increase. So the more branching you have, the, more, the greater the aggregate cross-sectional area is. Now, don't worry too much about these values. All I want you to worry about is the trend. So um, again, as we go from the aorta all the way to the capillary beds, we increase the aggregate cross-sectional area because we increase the amount of branching. The next thing is the aggregate flow rate. Now, if we assume that no fluid is lost or gained by the vessels, the aggregate flow rate or the cardiac output would be the same all the way from the aorta to the capillary beds. So it would, be, it would be around five liters per minute. Now the next thing is the linear velocity. Now the linear velocity in this case is looking at the aggregate cross-sectional area. So in other words, as the aggregate cross-sectional area increases from the aorta to the capillary beds, the linear velocity through each tube is going to be decreasing. So as we go from the aorta all the way down to the capillary beds, the linear velocity will decrease. And this is going to become incredibly important when it comes to diffusion, which we will talk about later. So in general, as we go from the aorta all the way to the capillary beds, we see that the cross-sectional area of each individual vessel decreases. The aggregate cross-sectional area increases due to that branching. The individual resistance increases due to the decreased radius of each individual vessel, but the aggregate resistance decreases due to the increased branching. We see the same flow rate or cardiac output, and we see that the linear velocity decreases due to the increased cross-sectional area or increased branching. So the last question that I want to ask in this video is which vessel has the greatest pressure drop? And the answer to that question are the arterioles. But why? In order to understand this, we have to look at Ohm's law of hemodynamics, which states that the pressure difference is equal to the flow rate times the resistance. Now, the main thing that we're going to be looking at is the resistance.
So the greater the resistance, the greater the pressure difference between two points. Now, why do the arterioles have the greatest pressure drop? Well, in order to understand this, we're going to bring up this graph. So on this graph, we have the aggregate resistance plotted on the y-axis. And what we're going to see is something like this. So this point could represent the arteries. This point represents the arterioles. Now the reason why the aggregate resistance decreases from the arteries to the arterioles is because the ar there are much more arterial branches than artery branches. So in other words, the aggregate resistance is going to decrease from arteries to arterioles. Now this big drop that we see happens between the arterioles and the capillary beds. Now this big drop here in resistance has to do with the fact that there are much more capillaries in parallel than arterioles. Now because you have this great decrease in resistance, you also have a great difference in pressure between the arterioles and the capillaries. So this is why you have a great pressure drop between the arterioles and the capillary beds because the, just the sheer number of capillaries is so much greater than arterioles. So in summary, the organs in our body are all organized in parallel, and from the aorta to the capillary beds, we see an increased aggregate cross-sectional area, an increased individual resistance of each individual vessel. We see a decrease in the individual cross-sectional area, aggregate resistance, and linear velocity. And we also see that each of these uh, vessels has the same cardiac output or flow rate. And then we also saw that the arterioles have the greatest pressure drop. Now, I hope this video helped you understand some of the general principles of arteries, arterioles, and capillaries. And I hope to see you in the next one.